Hey everyone, it's me Sloth, and in today's video I'm going to be explaining 5 things that you may or may not know about Vesteria that can be useful. At the end I'll also do some bonus things that aren't as useful but just kind of funny. But yeah, that's going to be today's video, it's going to include things like splitting items and how to get the training dummies and all that stuff. If you enjoy Vestory content and want to see more of it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Now let's go on with the video. So first off, splitting items. This is useful when you're trading things and you just want, like, say I have 80 Nilgar runes and I want to trade just one to someone. You can actually split the items. This is something some people don't actually know, but if you just drag it with left click and then right click an empty slot, you can actually just split the item and then trade it separately instead of just the full 79 and... Um, I really can't do it right here, but you can also just make more stacks of it. And yeah, it's pretty neat. Now, this one may be a bit more well known, but it's still important for the people who don't know it. You can actually get a free stat and skill reset from Nilgar. And let me explain how. So, for the skill reset, there is a chest right up here that's guaranteed to give you a skill reset. I think this has like some sort of level cap on it, but it's like really small, like level 5 or something. And for the stat reset, it's actually not technically free since you need to pay 50 silver, but it's way better than buying it from another player for like 800 silver, as long as you have an extra save slot for it, of course. But you just go in here, and you'll find Vincent's lab, and here you talk to him. And he just says he's going to randomize your stat stats, you just have to say let's do it and then accepts the changes every single time. If you don't say do it afterwards, this won't work, so you have to you have to do that. And at the fifth time, he will give you a stat reset token for free. But your stats will be like completely randomized now, so you're gonna have to fix that. Basically, this just breaks an entire save's stats, but if you just want the stat reset tone for another save and don't care about one save, then it's perfectly fine You just get them for free like this. For our third little mechanic, I'm going to be talking about stat passives or perks or whatever you want to call them. Now, this is something Vesteria literally does not explain at all, but essentially in old Vesteria, when you open up this abilities UI, it actually looked more like something like this, where it show all your perks for each stat. Essentially at 70 of each stat, you'd max out all the passives. And yeah, you just unlock passes for each stat the more you level them up. These are still in the game, but the game just doesn't tell you you have them anymore because the UI just completely removed the tab that tells you which passes you have. But luckily I have them all documented in a text document so I can show you each stat passive there is. Notice when I do this roll, there's the little rock icon there, it spins my nightcap, but that's a 70 vitality perk. That just means I'm taking 20% less damage. But anyway, that's just an example of one of them. Let me show you all of the... Uh, stat passes, or do you want to call them? Let's get into the strength perks now. For five strength, you get 1.2 times double slash damage. Ten strength, 1.1 times damage to full like mobs. Twenty strength, five percent chance to stun enemies on hit. This one is actually pretty good. Thirty strength, iron will to gain 40 percent knockback reduction. Fifty strength is the 1.1 times damage to enemies below 30 percent HP, and seventy strength is the deal five percent just bonus damage. For dex, we have five. These dex perks are actually really important. Five dex is endurance, which is just stamina. You get extra stamina. And then ten dex is you get movement speed plus one, jump plus one, two. For twenty dex, you get more uh, greed and more money dropped. Basically, just that's what it is from mobs. Uh, thirty dex is one point four times consumable usage speed. So you just eat things faster. Fifty dex is ten plus ten percent more critical chance. And 70 dex is just 1.2 times attack speed. For vitality, there most of the vitality perks are broken. The only good ones are the 20 and 70 vitality, but I'll just read them out anyway. Uh, 5 vitality is 1.25 times regeneration healing. 10 vitality is 1.1 times idle recovery rate. Uh, 20 vitality is a 5% chance to negate a, an attack, which is one of the best ones. And then these next two are broken, but 30 vitality is supposed to like heal like more XP from fireplaces. This one's broken. So is the 50 vitality one, where it's supposed to it, like consumables like heal you more. That one also does not work. But then there's the 70 vitality one, unstoppable, which take 20% less damage from an ability use. 
which that one's really good. It lasts for five seconds, and that's just good for like knights and stuff. Now let's get into the intelligence perks. Five intelligence is you just get 15 plus max MP. 10 intelligence is damaging an enemy recovers 1 MP. This is really good for clerics with the multi venom bombs since they're attacking so fast, they're constantly getting MP. And then you have 20 intelligence, just reduce shop costs by 10%. Uh, the thing about this one is that it does work, I believe, but the UI won't show you you're getting a discount, like it'll still stay the same price, but you are getting a discount when you buy things with silver or gold. However, it doesn't work with things like the Spider Queen Shop or Mushroom Apocalypse Shop or Crystal Beast, whatever, it doesn't work with that. 30 intelligence is increased mana regen by 10%. 50 intelligence is you get more mana or sort of consumables, 1.2 times more. And 70 intelligence is just reduced ability cooldowns by 15%. That's like the really good one. You get lower cooldowns on all your abilities. Up to you what you decide to do with these passives. Again, I like it's good to know these at least because it, you could build different things with them. Like you could build really tanky builds with the vitality perks. You can build like really fast perks with the dex ones. Or just, you know, lower cooldown to the intelligence ones. And yeah, they're just, it's good to know these at least. Number four is going to be the Spider Queen's Lair now. At Enchanted Forest, there is a secret little lair for the Spider Queen. There's two different layers. You have the Spider Abyss from Tree of Life, which is the party quest. And over here is like a buffed version of the Spider Queen that spawns every 12 hours. To access it, you need to go to Tree of Life. And there's a specific bush we're looking for. I think it's this one, yeah. Right here. You go underneath here, and you just walk on down. There's actually some chests down here too. If you like, just hug the wall, but you'll find some chests. But we're not interested in the chests. We're gonna go over here and then go down over here, and right here you'll find the lair. Now the reason I'm putting this in the video is because I don't think this is that very well known. I mean there is like a handful of people here, but this is supposed to be like one of those big bosses. It's it's a buffed version of the Spider Queen, however the loot is the same. It still drops web staff, Spider Queen crown. I believe it's supposed to be the drop chances are increased though, but it also has one of the only bosses that have a timer right next to it, so there's that. And there it is. So it is supposed to be buffed, it can actually kill you, but the only way I can see this thing killing you is if you get caught in the venom, honestly. It's, it's still buffed, but not that buffed. And it does seem like we did get a drop. Oh, it's a spider essence, so. And you get like a whole bunch of eggs. So for the fifth thing I'm going to mention is guild halls. Guild halls are actually how you unlock those training dummies that I use in my subclass guides. I already explained this somewhat in my sorcerer guide, but they're just like clans in Vesteria. You, you just have groups of people who just build up bank funds to upgrade guild halls and you get a little like hang, hangout somewhere. And you can also build up your guild hall to get more members and stuff the more gold you put into it. If you'd like to make a guild hall, what you need to do is go to port. And you'll find this building here, just the guild hall, I think it's called, yeah. And you just enter it, and what you need to do is, you'll actually need to invite six, I think they have to be level 10, um, people who are not in a guild already, and then you just click here to create a guild for one gold. And once you've created the guild for one gold, you can upgrade it to get more members, and you can also get a guild hall. Let me explain the guild hall. Now basically in every city you'll find an area like this with the little purple flag here. This is in every like city, Mushtown, Nilgarth, Port, Tree of Life, and Warrior Stronghold. And you just talk to them once you get a guild. I think you have to be leader though and they'll let you into a guild hall. Now I don't actually have my guild in the Port one, mine is in the Warrior Stronghold one, or at least the one I'm in. And once you get tier 3 guild hall, you can actually use Taximan Dave to travel there anytime you want for 10 silver, which is really good for getting discounts sometimes because there's also Taximan Dave inside the guild hall. So the guild hall I'm in currently is the Warrior Stronghold one. This one is tier 3, so if you first start out, it may not look like this. Once you get tier 3 guild hall though, which costs 100 gold, I believe, you just have to keep constantly donating to the guild here and then you upgrade it via the thing in port, I believe. And 
Once you get tier 3, you get a Taxman Dave without a cart, and you get the Magenta Potions, which heal 600 HP, can buy the Mana Elixir. And it's just really nice once you get tier 3. The Guild Hall is going to be a nice place to just socialize and stuff. You can also, once you're in the Guild Hall, if you're a higher rank than someone in your guild, you can actually duel them, and they'll be able to just force them to accept if they're a lower rank than you. So uh, try that in yourself if you're a higher rank in your guild, but... You can also go over here once you're tier 3 and fight some training dummies. Obviously this may depend on what like type of guild hall you have. I'm going to do really bad DPS as this paladin, but <laughs> yeah. Now other than the guild hall, guilds aren't really used for anything competitive at the moment. But there is that one thing in Whispering Dunes you find at the outpost which lets you uh, compete with other guilds to see who can kill the most bandits and bandit camps. But other than that, there are plans in the future for guilds to do more competitive things like the Tribute Wars, which is like a PvP minigame and stuff, so they have like little guild wars. But yeah, that's pretty much guilds. You just, you make a guild or join one, and then you constantly donate it until it gets 100 gold, and then you upgrade it to tier 3, which gives you this really cool hideout. One more thing I'd like to mention is if you don't like a guild hall, you can always change it for free. Obviously, if you're the leader, you can change it for free. It doesn't cost anything. So say you get tier 3 warrior stronghold, you can change it to a tier 3 tree of life one for free. It doesn't, it's not cost anything. So now that we've gotten all the useful tips out of the way, let's get into the useless obscure tips that aren't useful at all. Have you ever wanted to go underneath this ice near the Yeti cave in Redwood Pass? No? To get under the ice, you have to go up this log right here. And then you're essentially just looking for a little hole. I recommend bringing a rune with you because once you get underneath the ice, it's really hard. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to get back up. But you climb through here. And you'll find a little hole that looks something like this. And if you jump in the hole, you'll fall all the way down. And this is where it's like impossible to come back up unless you use a rune. And then you can go, you can actually fish here too. If you, I get a fishing rod, you can fish to get the same fish that you end up getting in Warrior Stronghold, like catfish and all that. And this is like a really bad fishing spot because it's really inaccessible, but you can go in this water. And there's literally like nothing here. There's, there's nothing here. It's only useful if you want to draw attention to yourself during the Yeti boss fight. That is all this is useful for. But you, you can sort of see yourself floating underneath this ice. So, yeah, there's that. If you want people to think you're a hacker or something, I guess this is what you'd have to do. It looks like someone noticed me. Um, They just kept speaking hashtags. I have no idea what they're trying to say. They said hello. There we go. An a nice person. Do you have boots? Alright, for the final piece of trivia, I'd like you guys to take a guess on what map I'm in. Well, if you're the one person that guessed Krabby Den, then yeah, you are correct. I did do this on a little community post, just to see if anybody would even get it. And surprisingly, Anakin did get it in like, less than like, an hour. I was actually surprised, since all you could see in the screenshot was the skybox and the playlist. I didn't think anyone would even get it, but yeah, they got it. The reason I'm in a base plate though is that if you actually go to an area and then just try to go backwards real quickly like to the area you just came from your teleport will break and it'll allow you to go through this little teleport area without actually teleporting but then you're kind of stuck unless you rejoin or use a rune but this is the Krabby Den let me put the music on since I turned it off since so I'd give it away it's it's a little bit of a creepy area because you got these dead crabs here but then you have this like happy cheerful music playing there's surprisingly another person here, it's like really late at night, I don't know why they're here, but there's someone here right now. And there's also a golden chest here that has the old fishing rod in it, which is completely useless since you could just get this from the um, port shop for like 400 bronze or something, so this is like a useless golden chest. But yeah, this is the crab den, it can be accessed through Seaside Path. You just go underneath the water near where that pirate ship is, and you go down this crevice and there it is. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, like I said earlier in the video. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.